Welcome back to the Compass Podcast. Today, I'm joined by my good friend, Justin Ballard, CEO and co-founder of J Energy. Jay recently closed a large deal with Mawson Infrastructure in Texas Pacific land to mine up to 4 exahash in Texas. We talk about the deal structure, on versus off-grid mining, and TPL's foray into mining. Justin, welcome back to the Compass Podcast. Great to see you again. How you been? I'm good, man. Good to see you too. I'm always always happy to talk to you, Will. Good. Let's keep it that way. Let's talk <laughs> about the deal uh, as well. This is, this is huge news. I mean, you, you talked to me about it a little bit in December. Obviously, parts were still being put together at the time and these deals, you have to be pretty secretive about it. You don't want people to steal your hash rate or your energy, but mm-hmm. it's out and it has a lot of big names, including Mawson and then one name that I'm now familiar with. Texas Pacific Land or TPL, a uh, pretty big deal for both Jay and then also big deal for Texas and the energy scene to see TPL get involved. So we'd start there. A rundown on the deal would be great. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's a 120 megawatt deal across four separate substation locations. Um, they make, you know, we have one site's 20 megawatts, two 30 megawatt sites and one 40 megawatt site. They're all within about 40 miles of each other out in West Texas. Um, yet, like you mentioned, TPL is one of the largest, if not the largest, I believe they are the largest landowner in the state of Texas. They have about 900,000 acres um, and they derive most of their income from oil and gas activities. Uh, so they are not like an oil and gas exploration company, but anybody that is out in West Texas that is, uh, you know, dealing with TPL on, on trying to get to their oil and trying to get to their property uh, that they're mining on, or I'm sorry, mining them. And I've been in here a long time that they're producing oil and gas on. uh, They're going to know who that name is. And uh, I mentioned this the other day on your show, they're about a $10 billion plus market cap company. Um, I had done a lot of deals with them in the past when I was at Anadarko Petroleum. Um, In fact, Ryan had some strong relationships with a couple of the guys over there as well. Uh, but one of my good friends at Anadarko, Kevin Pierce, was a director of our TPL. And so that's really what spurred the conversation in the first place was Kevin just reaching out and saying, hey, man, we're getting a lot of inquiries from these mining groups. And uh, we don't really understand a whole lot about what's going on, but I know you've gotten to the Bitcoin mining space. So why don't we why don't we kind of work together and figure out like what we got and maybe you can help educate us on the on, on what's going on with this Bitcoin mining stuff. And so that was back early, like uh, April, May of last year. So right when, right after Ryan and I really got things going. And so um, one thing led to another, we had secured about a 10 megawatt site on them, but then we got a few more and uh, they, they've really got educated pretty fast about what they actually have within their portfolio and that land position out there. And so, um, you know, kudos to them to, recognize that they wanted to make this a part of their uh, revenue streams and part of their kind of portfolio going forward. And also even more importantly than just kind of having the property and trying to get miners on it, they've expressed a lot of interest in actually learning about mining themselves and providing some capital dollars to actual mining operations. So um, I do, I agree with you. I think it's a huge thing for not only Jay, in Mawson, but in TPL, but for the entire Bitcoin mining industry, because one of the things that Ryan and I really wanted to uh, do when we got into this space was help educate uh, oil and gas companies to, you know, the opportunity that they have within their portfolio and getting TPL on board is really, I mean, I think it has a chance to open the floodgates for groups to see that, hey, this is something that is one legitimate because you have maybe the oldest publicly traded mining or publicly traded company in the country looking to allocate dollars to some mining operations. That that's a big deal, um, and even even potentially holding some Bitcoin on the balance sheet. So now I don't want to speak for them. I am not speaking for them. Uh, those are things that you know they're still going to be going through, but uh, it's all been part of the conversations that we've had with them. So. 
Um, to get back to the deal, though, I'm sorry to go off. On, you know me, Will. I'm going to go on a tangent. <laughs> I know how this conversation is going to go. I'm going to have a plan and it's not going to go. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> squirrel, you know, that one of those kind of deals. But uh, yeah, so the deal is 120 megawatts across four separate substations. Two of those substations are on TPO. The other two are owned by some private families that are, you know, large landholders out there. Um, but on each one of those sites, uh, Mawson is putting together an SPV that will basically manage that that operation. And um, Jay will have the opportunity to elect to participate with that entity um, once they hit a certain number of megawatts online. And, uh, you know, that, they're Mawson, one thing about them that I was really impressed from the get go, number one was the people they have over there. They're a great group of guys. I don't I know they kind of fly under the radar a little bit with the public mining groups that are out there. Um, but I met Liam Wilson early on and he's just an incredible guy. And then I got to know a lot of their other team members and, and, uh, I've been super impressed with James, their CEO, James Manning, uh, Nick Hughes, Liam, everybody up Craig. I mean, every, their entire team is a bunch of fun guys, very knowledgeable, very hardworking. And the thing that impressed me the most was probably their efficiency. We went out to a site of theirs in Atlanta in December of last year and went back in January. And from the time that we were there, about a month passed, and they increased the capacity at their site, I think, seven times. It was six or seven times what it was from the time when we were out there. And they had barely even cleared out some trees when we were out there the first time. So um, their operational efficiency is is very impressive. And uh, I'm looking forward to learning from them as well. You know, we are... In, I guess in the mining space, we're fairly established, but, um, you know, you look at a group like Moss and they've been mining for about four years. So uh, they're doing a good job. And, and I, I think that they are a group that people really should kind of keep their eyes on because I think that they are watching how aggressive they are and so uh, creative in the way that they're willing to do things has really impressed me. And I think that they're going to have a lot of success going forward. So um That's the way we kind of structured it with them. Now we do get, we and TPL are getting a portion of the gross profits from that deal. Um, It's, you know, it's a small portion, but uh, we structured it in a way to where Mawson's incentivized and so is Jay and TPL. Uh, And so look, we're, we're very blessed to have it happen. I'm very uh, honored to be a part of kind of orange peeling a very large publicly traded oil and gas company. Um, I'm, I, I think this is huge for Texas. I think it's huge for us, Mawson and TPL. And, and again, the Bitcoin mining industry in general, I think this could, could hopefully be a first domino to fall with a lot of public, public groups coming out. Cool to see Jay there first. Digging into uh, yeah. the, the, the deal itself a little bit more and maybe just some clarification. So Jay's working on like the mining side. Mawson is providing infrastructure for hosting and then TPL is providing the land and then the energy is going to be worked on with ERCOT through Mawson. That's my understanding. Is that correct? That is correct. So Mawson will, Mawson is doing the mining as well. So they're building it out completely, right? They're going to build out all 120 megawatts, which we do uh, kind of forecast to all be online by the end of fourth quarter this year. Um, So they are doing that, but we get the right to elect to buy a portion of the uh, SPV that is there. And so basically we'd be jointly owning the entire asset with them. Just proportionally, we would have a smaller percentage than they do. Um, so yeah, that that's the way it's working. TPL is bringing the land. They own all the land around those substations. And um, they wanted to have the opportunity to participate as well. So they would be participating through Jay with in the Mawson entity. So um, that, yeah, that, that was the structure. Um, there's a lot of educating, I think, that is going to be going on in West Texas over the next year to two years. In fact, the last three days, I've just gotten bombarded with phone calls from ranchers and and uh, royalty owning groups, uh, a lot of different folks, operators that are wanting to know more about the deal and how to put these things together and kind of looking at like, hey, we need help figuring out what we actually have and how this works. I'd say this a lot to people is that like you will and me and a lot of the people that are kind of in the Bitcoin Twitter world, uh, we talk in this echo chamber a lot and we assume that 
this kind of knowledge about what they have and what they should do with this power that they're sitting on or that's in their portfolio, we act like we think that they know these things and that they don't. And this goes back to us being so early in the game right now is that even though this stuff seems like second nature to a lot of us and a lot of the people that will listen to this, we're still in the education phase of getting folks and companies to understand, number one, what Bitcoin is, how it can how it can improve their lives financially, and how it actually gives them a lot of self-sovereignty and power back. But also so the companies can understand that this is a real use of capital that can create a whole nother aspect of your business that you haven't kind of recognized before now. Yeah, definitely. The Mazen thing is cool as well, seeing that they're publicly traded. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the only, few, there's only a few publicly traded Bitcoin mining companies out there. I think like 20 now, which compared mm-hmm. to the amount of private miners out there is is pretty significant. And then for Jay, it's also like a pretty big step up. Uh, your current megawatt under management, if I can make up that term really quickly, it's, you guys have like eight megawatts so About far? Seven. Close to seven. Seven megawatts? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. So it's a big step up in terms yeah, of management. Really big step up. What does that yeah. look like in terms of expanding J? Like, are you guys hiring or, or are you um, guys? Not yet. Um, well, I'm hoping we will be pretty soon. Um, with it, the structure being what it is on this deal, um, we really won't be hiring people for this specific deal. What it does create, though, is some revenue generation for us that allows us to kind of take on new projects and grow our own self-mining operations, not only in Wyoming, but also in Texas. And uh, there's a lot of, you know, this is an on-grid operation that we're doing. And, and, you know, you and I have talked about this a little bit. Uh, We've been a very kind of focused solely on off-grid opportunities. We're not getting away from that, but we are also, you know, we're looking for the most competitive projects uh, that we can find and ways to make sure that we're able to be sustainable through, you know, we're in a down market right now, but things can get significantly worse. And um, so we want to be prepared to be able to kind of weather those storms. And if that means on-grid opportunities, then we go on-grid opportunities. Um, if that means off-grid opportunities, we do off-grid opportunities. And again, to, to kind of reiterate what I just said a little bit ago is that I've been getting really kind of bombarded with opportunities over the last few days. And you know, I, I've had calls just today, the amount of flare gas, the opportunities there are with just a few companies, it was over 10 million a day in, in gas that's available that's being flared right now. And so um, things like this deal kind of, they get your name out there a little bit more. And people, again, to go back to the legitimacy that TPL provides, when they see a group like TPL is doing a deal with us, it allows other folks to be like, hey, call those guys. TPL's doing a deal with them. Like they've got to be legit. Let's call them. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're going to be growing. Well, we are growing, obviously. But um, yeah, we're, we're still going to be looking for opportunities off grid, on grid, renewable. I don't care what it is. Uh, we're, we're going to be continuing to look for those opportunities. And, you know, as Ryan said before, I think he said it at the Bitcoin conference. Um, he's an energy maximalist and, and I feel the same way. So um, we're oil and gas guys at heart. That's where we came from. But regardless of what that energy source is, if it's sustainable um, by being profitable, because that's ultimately what's going to dictate what is sustainable is whether or not it's profitable, then we will entertain it. And uh, so we're going to continue to, with that thesis going forward. That's awesome. Let's talk about off-grid versus on grid, mm-hmm. which you just mentioned a second ago, your primary site in Wyoming is off grid using stranded natural gas, not flared, but midstream is my mm-hmm. understanding. Right. And that's a very big difference from using on grid in ERCOT. You mm-hmm. guys are having to work with the grid operators. You're going to have to structure some sort of deal. It seems like those uh, pieces have not been finalized yet. But mm-hmm. curious to get like your perspective on the off grid versus on grid debate that we've seen in Bitcoin mining circles, and then also some information about how this deal is likely to be structured with working with ERCOT. Right. Okay. Um, So the on-grid versus off-grid, there's obviously benefits to each and there's negatives to each. Um, We initially started with off-grid. Well, number one, gas prices were significantly lower. And so gas was not valued 
much by operators, midstream companies like that. You know, there, there was a lot more opportunities to get cheap gas, cheaper gas. Um, that has obviously changed. And so now you've got to find some more strategic locations where you can use off-grid gas um, that is stranded or being flared, but you're always going to be limited by some of the scalability issues. And so um, that's one thing that we even knew early on. If you just go the flare route, there's a lot of downtime on wells and there's a lot, there's a decline curve that you got to factor in. And so you're never, you're, if you're starting off right off the IP of a well, the initial production, for those of you that don't know what that is, um, then yeah, the well is going to decline rapidly, very, very quickly. And it's the declines quite a bit. And so um, you still get in a situation where you're either building too big and you got to take it down as, as it declines or you're building a smaller to wait for the decline. And then you're still flaring a lot of this gas. And, um, and then you got the situations where the operators have to shut in for whatever reason, um, operational issues, things like that. So there's downtime that gets factored in there as well. Um, that, that's kind of the negative. The positive, obviously, is you're removing flared gas from you know, the environment. Uh, that's, a, that's a positive, right? Um, you also are getting it extremely cheap for the most part, which is obviously a huge benefit for a miner. Um, but again, the scalability issues is, is probably the biggest negative factor for me in the downtime. Um, for on-grid, the benefits are you're getting some of the cheapest power in the country, especially in the ERCOT hub, right? The Western ERCOT hub. Um, th- that is some of the most competitive power rates in the country. A negative for it, for the on-grid, is that they are tied to strip pricing. So right now, this pricing in, in the you know, ERCOT hub and what in the West ERCOT hub is not nearly what it was, you know, four months ago, five months ago. It's been it's gotten hit pretty hard by the the eight dollars an M gas prices. So um, now that will eventually correct itself, most likely because you're gonna have more producers come on and drill more wells and bring more gas on the system and all that. But you still have supply constraints out there that I think we're gonna be in a little bit higher price environment for quite a while. Um, so the, all, there's also a negative to being on grid in, in the re- regulatory risk in my mind. Um, you know, I know Texas is very uh, welcoming to to uh, Bitcoin miners and they're doing a great job of bringing it in. Uh, but there's always in the back of my mind, and this was probably the lawyer brain of me, but there's always the fear that, you know, we get another major winter storm. Things don't go quite as well as we hope they do as far as curtailing power and sending it back to the grid. You get some major outages and, and uh, you get the squeaky wheel kind of getting the grease issue where... Y- the, the as soon as the politicians see that there's some people throwing a fit about uh, Bitcoin miners or having instability on the grid, Bitcoin miners could end up being one of the first ones targeted uh, to be taken off. And so I think it's really important. And I think groups like Riot are doing a really good job of really making sure that they are participating in the curtailment programs and being being a kind of proactive uh, cooperative group with ERCOT and with Encore and the other you know, utilities out there to make sure that they are complying with those kind of programs. Um, so we need to make sure that all the miners that are getting on grid down there need, need to do the same. I think that I think it's something that if we're going to have that be our, our kind of narrative, which it is true, I believe it wholeheartedly, 100%, um, we need to make sure that we're participating in, in cooperating with that. Tell me about ERCOT a little bit as well, since we're on this part of the conversation. There's been so much Bitcoin mining going down there. It's a spike mm-hmm. in demand off the grid. And a few years ago, we had the different problem, too much supply. And so we saw mm-hmm. like a lot of windmills going over there. And now there was like a negative pricing. Bitcoin mm-hmm. miners come in, cause demand, demand's going up so dramatically that ERCOT's coming in and trying to re- draw the rules for Bitcoin miners in the region. Right. How does that look like for you guys trying to drop contracts right now for this site? Uh, maybe you can lend a little information for other miners in the area who are also trying to drop mm-hmm. contracts and, and hitting their heads against the yeah. wall in some cases. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and shoot, I'm going to give a little plug for myself right here, probably. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, that is an issue, right? That is an issue. There, there are, there's the new ERCOT rules came out and they're doing the kind of the, the test and the reviews 
uh, over the modeling and the power draws and all that type of stuff for sites that are over 75 megawatts. Um, now, this is 120 megawatts, but it's at four separate sites. And so um, we're kind of avoiding, and I don't want to cause any undue attention to, <laughs> to ERCOT trying to come in and sneak in and get us, but um, it, you know, we're, we're not violating any type of rules and we're, we're well with it. And, and from what they're trying to do, I think it still makes sense. But we are every one of our sites is less than 40 megawatts, is 40 megawatts or less. And so um, that's one way to, you know, reduce your your kind of draw that you're having on one particular spot within that hub. And so it's dispersed more. It's decentralized. So it's better. Um, and that's kind of one of the things that, uh, you know, ERCOT didn't have that rule before we got going. But that was one of the things that we actually looked at as an attractive thing is that you're dispersing these sites across. So if you have an issue at one, it's not taking down all of your operations, right? So um, that's one aspect I think people need to consider. I know there's these massive farms out there that, you know, that's that's attractive, but I think that there's aspects to how we're setting this up with Mawson that Mawson knew right off the bat. They identified that early on was like, we like having separate sites that are, you know, 40 megawatts, 20, 30, 40 megawatts. Uh, so especially considering they're they're fairly within they're within a region that you can kind of get to fairly easily. So um, yeah, that that's one aspect of it that I think uh, was very really kind of I don't know forward thinking on their part was that they identified that that makes this probably more attractive, and uh, it just was a kind of a it was just the reality of the way it was going to work for us because we were going around. I was trying to identify all right here's substations. Do I know the landowner? Let's get it if we do. And so that that was that was basically what I was doing is it was like landman 101 work is you go kind of lock up the property that you want and and then you go find the way to develop it. And the best way that we could do that was finding a good partner like Mawson and, and put it together. But as far as going back to ERCOT, again, sorry, will I jump off on tangents? So <laughs> going back to keeping me on my toes at the very yeah, least. I'm like, yeah. did I ask that question already? No, he's answering no. it. Wait, did I? <laughs> He answered the question I was going to, oh, okay. My bad, my bad. But um, yeah, so the way that ERCOT uh, kind of West Hub works out there is that the prices will be bid out. And we are working with Priority Power, as pretty much everybody out there is. Uh, we're working with Priority Power on this deal. And so um, they are going to bid out the PPA to the retail providers that are out there. Um, and, you know, Lawson will be able to decide who they want to utilize for that. Um, as far as the pricing that you mentioned, like the there's negative pricing and the overbuild on, on the grid and things like that, there are still negative pricing out there, despite the fact that your overall energy price is going to be higher than what it was just a few months ago. Um, you still, what I think miners are going to do and what I think Mawson will likely end up doing a lot of is kind of playing that power market game where you're looking for the arbitrage during peak demand times when they sell power back during that time. Um, during, you know, lower, lower, like when the prices go negative, obviously you want to probably consume more power at that point. So um, I, I anticipate them playing that kind of arbitrage game a lot. And I think that's what you got to do considering gas prices are what they are and you're not going to get the same kind of prices. But even with all the, the building of all the renewables over there, um, and yes, gas prices went up quite a bit. We're, we're still going to see this same like wild swing on a day to day basis. Like you'll you'll see in the morning, it might be four hundred dollars a megawatt hour. And then later on in the day, you're going to see negative five dollars a megawatt hour. And so it fluctuates tremendously throughout the day, uh, even with, you know, the, there being the price fluctuation and, and you paying more uh, as a retail purchaser. You're paying more than what you would have paid before you still can take advantage of those different kind of markets yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what and, makes ERCOT kind of unique. Mm -hmm. that there, you don't have these same opportunities all over the, all over the country. You, ERCOT's a very kind of unique situation. One last question about that before we, we finish up with TPL. Mm -hmm. We haven't devoted enough attention to that topic itself. I've gotten some information from some miners saying that ERCOT's starting to drag their feet on things. They're redrawing up the rules. Mm -hmm. What's your take on this in the next year or so? There's supposed to be gigawatts of Bitcoin miners going live in West Texas. Obviously, right. it's going to change the rules a little bit because there's, there's pressure points that are being hit. 
Mm-hmm. I'm curious to get your take on it. Yeah, um, I think that's it's unavoidable. Right. Um, the, the industry has exploded in Texas and uh, it's just going to continue to explode. Right now, we're just in the early phases of where people are trying to get deals set up and tr- people are trying to secure power. Some of them are building their own substations right now. And so um, I think it's it's unavoidable. And I know most of us in the Bitcoin world, are a lot, there's a lot of libertarian kind of mindset and we would prefer there to be hardly any regulation over stuff. But I think just realistically in the society that we live in, um, there's going to be. And, you know, ERCOT went through a lot uh, with the winter storm URI back in 2021. Um, And I think that they want to make sure that they are prepared for any situation that comes down in the future. And so, uh, yeah, I do think that what we say they're redoing the rules I don't know if it's redoing the rules or if they're just trying to make the rules. And um, because we are, this is a new industry. I want to say, I think there's about 150 uh, megawatts that are actually participating in the like LR response and all that type of, all the different ERCOT programs out there. Um, So that's not a ton when you think about the amount of Bitcoin mining that is coming on onto the grid. And so I think they're just trying to do their due diligence on, making sure that the power that is being dedicated to mining operations is actually there and that this isn't going to overwhelm the system. I, I, I just think when you hear, like even like you just said, like the five gigawatts that we're talking about coming on, that's a huge number. That's a huge number. And so I think that they would be doing themselves and they'd be doing the state a disservice by not looking into some of the stuff and just trying to make sure that, look, we're, we're ready for this influx of miners that are going to be coming on. And, uh, and uh, we're, we're, we're prepared to handle that. We've done the studies to make sure that our, our grid is stable enough to handle this demand that we anticipate over the next you know, two to three years. Yeah. I'm curious to see what the total gigawatt percentage comes online. Uh, yeah, I've heard I just a ton, a ton. Let's turn to TPL as we close up the conversation. So you gave us a little bit of the history beforehand. They're like one of the earliest... Uh, publicly listed companies are worth like ten billion. Their market cap's ten billion dollars right now. Can you walk us back through TPL though, like how they were formed in Texas, oh, what yeah. they've done in the meantime, and and what they're up to now? Right. Yeah. So um, they've been around basically since Texas became Texas, um, since the land grant, and uh, the way they got their property position was Texas Pacific Railroad. And so uh, when they were building the railroad through there, there was a land grant. Um, and that property, it was kind of checkerboarded and I don't know, I know I, I use oil and gas lingo and I know you guys don't know what I'm talking about, but, uh, they use section township range out there. And so that's the way the land is kind of carved up. So you got, it looks like a checkerboard and they've got kind of, if they had all the black squares, it's here, 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 you know, it's, it's kind of like that. And so, um, and then over time they started acquiring more property and, and uh, they were a trust for a long time, the Texas Pacific Land Trust. Um, they, they went public, and I want to say back in the 20s, um, maybe even before that. But uh, they developed, it just so happened that that property was situated on some of the best oil and gas reserves in the nation, actually, the best in the nation. And so once that discovery kind of happened, you've got so many pipelines that got to go through, you got water that needs to get taken through. You have oil and gas companies trying to get um, surface sites so that they can drill the put the pad on the on the property, um, and so they just slowly began to be a more and more prominent player in the oil and gas space. And uh, they also owned a lot of minerals as well, but most of their revenue is derived from surface operations. So SWD wells, saltwater disposal wells. That's the water that's produced from an oil and gas well. They dispose of it back into the reservoir down in, underground. Um, they also, like I said, their water team that handles putting water pipelines. I believe they even do some recycling. Uh, uh, they own something in a recycling system. I'm not for sure on that, but um, th- they just continue to build out their their land position. And with it being in the oil and gas reserves area that it's in, in the Delaware Basin, it just really kind of exploded their value. Um, they've also been getting very heavily invested into renewable projects, which is another aspect of this whole deal that I think is, you know, people are probably not obviously thinking about, but I think it gives Mawson 
a huge opportunity for growth um, over the next several years by working with TPL and us on some of the renewable opportunities that are going to be situated on that property. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it, it, they are they are as a, a, as conservative kind of old school group as you can get, but they're also showing that they're one of the most forward, proactive thinking groups that you can get by becoming one of the first groups to allocate some large capital dollars towards some mining operations. So, and not doing it off flared gas. I mean, like that's a big deal. Um, you know, a lot of the public companies look for opportunities to kind of dip their toes in the water and mine Bitcoin, but they want to do it as flare gas for the ESG narrative. This is, it, TPL is looking at this like this is a great uh, opportunity for us to get involved in a space that we think is going to be huge in the future. And so I, I really applaud them for being uh, aggressive and thinking forward on it. So I didn't get my plug though. I want to tell you my plug. I've got, I've, yeah, man, I've had a lot of, uh, outpouring or interest calls from landowners, ranchers, oil and gas companies, um, really all kinds of people, other Bitcoin mining companies um, to help them figure out how to structure deals. And uh, in fact, I got a really a call from a royalty owning group the other day that was a really big group. Um, it was about the TPL deal. Um, I have opened up a I'm an attorney, and I know that's a bad word to some people too, but um, I have opened up a law firm uh, that I am going to be working with some folks on kind of helping them put together these type of deals on their own property and things like that. So um, if anybody ever has any questions about how to structure these things or how to look at it, because it, while we're very similar to oil and gas, it's very different too. And I think that the landowners need to recognize that the miners have certain economics that they got to hit. And it's better for both parties if they're able to hit those metrics. So um, there's a lot of kind of education that needs to go on, not only with the oil and gas companies, but with the landowners as well. So like, this is a new market and you can't treat it just like oil and gas, even though it's very similar to oil and gas. Yeah. What's it called? Ballard and Sons or what? J Ballard Law. J Ballard Law. J Ballard Law. Works like J Energy, J Ballard Law. So yeah. Love it. Hey, we'll, now you've we'll just... got my established block height, 732. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> People are going to be like, what? What is, what is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> uh, totally, totally. Justin, thanks for coming on today. Where can people find you and track the developments at J Energy? Yeah, um, Twitter is easy one, uh, JLB underscore Oso. Um, and uh, also our website, jenergy.com. Um, you reach me at email j- justin at jenergy.com. Uh, so really any of those ways is good for me. LinkedIn too. I'm on LinkedIn. You guys can reach out on LinkedIn. Nobody he's, a boomer. Uses LinkedIn. He's, he's on LinkedIn. <laughs> he's on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, but that, yeah, any of those ways, they can call you and ask you too. True. They can just oh. hit me up. Uh, I'm not going to give out my phone number though. Cool. <laughs> Justin, thanks for joining us on the podcast and hopefully see you again soon and maybe even TPL in the near future on this podcast. Yes, That'd be great. actually, I would like to have them join us sometime if you if you are open to it. I'd like to There's have them always a spot. On. All right. Always perfect. a spot. Perfect. Kevin yeah. and Huntley, Huntley Burke and Kevin Pierce were instrumental in, in helping me get this done. So I want to really give them a shout out and thank you for for that. Liam Wilson, too, over at uh over at Moss and just Thank you for putting up me as well as Tom Hughes. Got to give him credit. <laughs> he, he really got annoyed, I'm sure. But uh, you only get one plug on the show. I'm sorry. All right. All right. You already used it. You already used it. It's one long <laughs> string of plugs. All right. So, all right. Well, thank you, Will. I appreciate you guys having me. And anytime you guys want to talk to me, I'd, I'd love to chat. For sure. Catch up soon. All right, yeah. man. Bye.